This is Jana Wild and Cat Hawk, and, and together, together we're seeking the middle path. Welcome to the middle path. Hello, everyone. Today on the middle path, we want to talk about the word sacred. Um, it feels like the word is used so often now. Um, or that there are sacred words that are used so often and randomly now. So how do we even know it's sacred? What do we even know what sacred means anymore? Because it's just kind of thrown out there. <laughs> well, and sacred implies an atmosphere, like a way of acting, behaving, treating something. And so with the way our world is and the way words are just thrown around and mm -hmm. misused, it's like... I don't know if we really even treat things in a sacred word, like in a sacred way. Like, are they even sacred to us? Do we even know? Yeah, I feel like for me, sacred used to be or is when I'm, when it's actually really sacred to me, I'm very calm, quiet, and still, and time almost doesn't exist. And... Even we just recently were in some very old indigenous sites in Ireland and it felt so sacred to us, but there's almost this feeling of let's just rush through. Okay, we got the information. Let's leave. And I was like, wow, we, it's almost not sacred anymore. Something that was so sacred and now it's not even sacred anymore. How, how do we understand what sacred is? Well, I was exact. That's exactly what I was going to say. I'm like, well, maybe we should just talk about why we're talking about mm -hmm. that this subject, and that's because of being in Ireland. We just got back from Ireland, and we visited a lot of sacred sites. Mm -hmm. And I think it really brings into contrast um, that they people put so much effort and time and energy. I mean, it took some of these sites took more than one lifetime to build, mm -hmm. um, and so many resources. When you think about um, indigenous people and they so much of their effort is going into <clears throat> surviving and gathering food farming um day-to-day -day yeah. things and yet they are prioritizing building these monuments and temples yeah even the, the thought and the effort they put into these because they aligned it with um the timeline of our seasons and the light and the solstice and to me it just felt so powerful and that the people <clears throat> used to take time to do these type of things and it made me think well what, what do I take time with now that is so sacred and meaningful to me that I create something uh, like this or even as a as a people and I don't really have many things I can look at and say that are maybe my family, my well, children. I think it's a pretty foreign concept <clears throat> to us in our society. Um, we just don't understand it because everything is immediate gratification mm -hmm. and um, very egotistical. And this idea of investing something that's larger than yourself, that's greater than yourself, that might not immediately benefit you right now. We can't grasp it. And so we trivialize it mm -hmm. and you see that in just Christian culture so much that it's like, Oh, that's just like those heathens or they were just afraid of yeah. some, like they were, they were just so afraid of these, these things cause they didn't have science or they didn't understand where, you know, how rain worked or how the sea, you know, how the seasons worked. And yet they're building things that, I mean, we still don't know how the pyramids were built yeah. it's like that. We don't even know how to build <laughs> and we're acting like, like they're idiots <laughs> it just doesn't really line up. <laughs> yeah, we were acting like they're less than, like they were not were not knowledgeable, but I feel like they actually had a piece of something, a piece of the puzzle that we're missing now. And I think that's why people are still being pulled back into these like 
sacred sites. Maybe they don't even realize that it's sacred, but they're still being called to them from some reason. For some reason. I mean, that's why we even went to Ireland, because we wanted to take a group of people to these sites that are so old. And for some reason, we're still being called to go to these places that these people from thousands of years ago built. It's almost like they knew. They, just, they knew something we don't know now. Well, and I think it's more than that they're just old. Mm-hmm. I think that there is a power there that resonates with a good amount of people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just like, oh, wow, this is old. And because it's old, it's interesting. Um, it, there's there's more to it than that. I, I think there is an energy there that people feel that impresses them. And I think think that we are especially drawn to it in our society because things have just become meaningless. Everything is so easily accessible, Mm -hmm. um, immediate gratification, um, all about, you know, (laughs) it's easy to like bash on social media, but it's Mm -hmm. just all about like a surface level and appearances. And this society, these old times Mm -hmm. these old sites it's about greater than self it's purpose it's meaning it's um sacred it's sacred it's bigger than the i am Mm -hmm. yeah we are just so in the i am especially american culture that's all about um, the the individual individualism mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. we worship it and not that the individual isn't sacred but spiritual things have to do with connecting with something greater than yourself yeah with going within to go without and realize how everything is connected this even the seasons and the the little snail oh, yeah, yeah on the pathway beside you just how connected <laughs> we are and to symbolism and for me it was. I loved that we went there and it was the death life cycles. It's the cycles and that's something that you and I have really come to understand um, within ourselves and like working on people. It's, there's there's this death life cycle we go through daily, but also throughout our life. We're all born, we're all going to die. And they understood it. They were not afraid of it. They were much more connected mm-hmm. to it. I mean, mm-hmm. talk about disconnect. Talk about yeah. the way, the things that our society focuses on in the modern world. Yeah. And we've done a very good job at hiding from things like illness and death and pain and poverty and mm-hmm. general suffering. And every now and then it kind of like, you know, something big happens and we can't avoid mm-hmm. it, whether a loved one dies or there's... a a mass shooting Uh or um, a natural disaster that that is catastrophic on a level that we can't Mm -hmm. hide from it. and We can't run away from it. (laughs) But how long do we really sit with that? You know, maybe maybe we're like, oh, wow, that was a lot. Like, how Mm -hmm. horrible. And then on to the next thing. Scroll on by. Like, or you make, like, a little, like, post or something to, like, acknowledge it in your, like, oh. Here's, you know, to the people of Ukraine, mm-hmm. I stand with you. And then immediately, like, just move on to yeah. the next thing in our life. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like we've learned to, we've disassociated with the living in the now. We've disassociated with what's sacred in life. Um, we don't, we run away from death. So it's in a way, it's like, how can you live if you don't understand death? They come together and... I just think that that's so sacred. It's so sacred to be able to understand these things. And it makes you feel alive and in the moment and what's around you. And um, a, a lot of the sites, indigenous sacred sites, at least in Ireland, and I'm trying to think of other places we've been, mm-hmm. if they did that there too. But they had the ashes of their ancestors there. And it's this connection um, to what's gone before, Mm -hmm. to the wisdom of those who have gone before. Just like you're building something, they're building monuments um, that are, they're not going to live to see because they recognized that just because your moment in this world might be this long, 
doesn't mean you're only living for that moment. And we don't get that in our world. We don't. Because we disconnect from death. Mm -hmm. Because we disconnect from the cycles of life, the seasons. We live in houses where we're not exposed to the elements. I mean, we wear rubber shoes now. Think of how often you have your feet barefoot on the ground and on the earth. And I'm sure we notice, like, if it's windy or rainy. But how often do we just stop and listen to it and feel it and allow our senses to open up to what's happening or around you. Um, I feel like we're living in the age of emptiness, loneliness, even though we have so many people around us now. It seems everyone is so alone, too. Yeah, and the even if you're aware, obviously we're aware when the seasons change, you know, mm-hmm. you have to maybe change your wardrobe a little bit, or as you start paying, you know, your heat bill goes up. Well, I feel like our stores let us know if a season's changing, because all the holiday stuff and consumerism yeah. starts to begin. The number one way it impacts you <laughs> is that you have to buy different things at yeah. the store. And, um, and the commercials and mm-hmm. ads and marketing change. <laughs> Like this feeling of the each season is let's spend more money. We got to spend money because we got to keep up with the image of each holiday and season. It's kind of it, it is. It's tragic, but you know, go back to indigenous mm-hmm. times, indigenous the indigenous people of Ireland. Mm-hmm. Um, the season change would profoundly affect them. Um, it affects even what you, down to what you're able to eat, mm-hmm. what you're able to harvest, what you're able to store. You know, they, they have to store for the long winter. So you survive. You have to <laughs> take care of the animals mm-hmm. in different ways. You switch their pastures. You move them to different places. Yeah. Um, maybe you might even move where you're living. And Could you mm-hmm. imagine if you had to move houses every season? Yeah. And so these season changes, um, they very much surrendered themselves to nature obviously they they built constructs within that so they could survive it whereas we we have molded the natural world to our will rather than surrendering to its processes and unfortunately for us the one thing we haven't quite been able to um overcome is death Mm -hmm. we still all die but because in every other way we've overcome nature Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're able to hide from death until the final moment and even there there's so much resistance and there's so much fear and i feel like i don't well i think we're still trying to figure out how to not just how 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 to just live forever (laughs) how to live forever and i think that even death has lost its sacredness um having um this ability to go the way you want to go. Um, now we're, we have the hospitals. I mean, there is hospice, and I think that you can still have your, your family around you, but I think when people used to go, they would create space around the one dying and call in their ancestors. So they would have their loved ones with them. They would cherish them. I, I feel, I guess in my mind, my thoughts are, is we celebrate so much birth and life and like a baby coming into the world but when one is dying there's a lack of that there's a lack of just kind of celebrating someone's life and letting them go letting them go in peace um, because we're afraid to let go we're afraid to let loved ones go we're afraid of death and change well when you talk about life death life the cycle that's worshipped in all indigenous cultures um, we only we only focus on one piece of that that's life and that's life and so we celebrate when things come alive Mm -hmm. you know like the baby being born and think i just keep going back to social media and thinking of how many posts people do around birth Mm -hmm. and around anticipating a birth yeah and just the the little baby booties the gender announcement (laughs) the gender reveal you know and then the hospital pictures Mm -hmm. where people look way better than they should (laughs) Considering what just happened, like what just happened. Yeah. Um. I mean, there is a death piece there in mm-hmm. birth, though. There is, and yeah. it's the labor. Mm-hmm. It is the pain. It is the there's the suffering of childbirth is like a death for the woman. 
yes. because she is the maiden, I was just, right? Yeah. The maiden is dying and she's becoming mother. She's becoming mother. That's, it's a huge leap. Well, and I feel like even with um, childbirth, we really try to avoid a lot of I was going to say, too, so. that is the one part of childbirth mm-hmm. that we avoid is the pain part. It's the pain. And we've gotten really good at figuring out how to skip that piece. Mm-hmm. And not, not to say that pain management is a bad thing, but the way the way we approach it, it's like, I don't want to feel, feel a single contraction. Can you start the epidural before I'm mm-hmm. even in labor? Can I just schedule my schedule C-section? C-section? Can I just like skip this whole mm-hmm. process that has been so revered mm-hmm. in hum- human history? Uh, sacred. <laughs> I mean, yes, yes. Yeah. We, may, we may die. Well, it's, if you think about in Christianity, uh, they they the, they sh- changed the suffering from a rite of passage for the woman into motherhood mm-hmm. and turned it into a curse. Yeah. Kind of mad about that. I know. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> you just sit for a second. Again, I feel like words, words have been shifted and changed and abused they have taken the things that were once so sacred and tried to control yeah so let's talk about what are the things that we call sacred in our modern world what are the things that people say are sacred well we grew up mormon (laughs) Dun, so, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so the temple it well I always heard it was special but now I'm being told that it's sacred um but I do not see sacredness there I see control when I see that building yeah they call it sacred but let's see what do they really do in that building you know uh women become less than a man yeah women are servants Oh, I'm trying to, they're servants to men. I'm trying to think if they use another word for it. Um, it's the whole ceremony is, you know, masculine, Mm -hmm. the garden of Eden, Mm -hmm. Eve being, you know, being seduced by Satan or whatever, eating the, (laughs) eating the, the fruit. Um, and then women having to be pulled through the veil by a man and then you also have to wear these, you know, underwear, so they, the clothing, and the temple clothing is very specific, too. Yeah. And it's almost like there's a nuance here, because you talk about ritual, and yeah, ritual, sometimes you do dress a certain way, say a certain thing, do things, like, have hand signals or whatever, like ritual, right? Mm-hmm. But But then the energy has shifted, whereas ritual initially was to empower the individual, to humble them, to connect them with the process of life, death, life. Mm -hmm. Now our ritual is used to to make you submit Mm -hmm. to an authority figure, one Mm -hmm. authority figure, rather than to make you connect with all of life. Yeah, I mean, well said, yes. Um, I, the one thing that was going through my mind is for men, yes, they get to connect to one thing. And as a woman, you only get to connect, you have to connect to your husband and then he connects to God for you. So you even lose that. Yeah. But if you think about even men within the Mormon Mm -hmm. church, they have to go through their leadership. That's yeah. That's true. So they have to connect to God through their bishop, stake president, Mm -hmm apostle prophet you know there's this very specific the only person who's not connecting to god through another person is the prophet yeah so they took this um gift of sacredness and rituals that we all have individually and turned it into you have to go to someone in order to be able to do these things i mean there are some ceremonies that yes you would go to like your shaman or your priestess or your priest but in Mormonism, it's almost not even allowed for you to just have it here. It's all controlled and owned. 
And then they call it sacred. And then they call it sacred. Even if you think about how people do... We'll, we'll give Christianity a break right now. <laughs> how people do shamanism now. Yeah. Well, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to bring it up. <laughs> but I it really bothers... It's the sacredness of the words shamanism, spirituality are used so vaguely now. You can just go online and get a certificate to become a shaman or even a healer, the word healer. Yeah. Everyone's, I mean, but we all actually do have healing powers, powers, but the ones that do have the real gift of healing is just, it's tainted. Well, it's, um, Unfortunate that one of the chief conversations we tend to have with people is how do I know who I can trust? How do I know who's safe? I am working through some healing, Mm -hmm. emotional, spiritual. You know, I would like a community or I'd like guidance. I'd Mm -hmm. like a guide. Um, But then I go to these things and it feels like people are trying to con me. They're trying to manipulate me. They're trying to, um, create these power structures Mm -hmm. just like in Mormonism, just like Christianity Christianity does. And we're just so spiritually sick that we don't even know how to be spiritual anymore. We don't even know what sacred means anymore. Mm. Um, at one, for example, at one of the indigenous sites, um, the most famous one, which being famous almost hurts it a little bit (laughs) (laughs) because it gets so much attention that Mm -hmm. not be, you know, people that maybe haven't done the work to really understand sacred or spiritual things are are going there. And that's new Grange there. We're standing out front. We just walked up to this like magnificent ancient structure yeah and the tour guide is trying to prepare us to enter and she has to tell people please stop taking pictures for just one minute like those this woman's trying to take selfies and she's literally like standing in front of the tour guide mm-hmm. and and the entrance for all of us you have plenty of time in a minute to you'll take have pictures. plenty of time in a minute yeah like seriously <laughs> You have time. Can you just take a moment to appreciate where what I'm at, saying where you're, where she's and saying. where you are? We're so in a rush to get the picture, and I, I'm. But just what a, is the picture even? What does I, that represent? Mm, yeah, I mean, I'm just as guilty. I've had so many moments of that, and being able to walk into that tunnel and inside the building or inside the mound, the cairn, the womb, the womb and going inside and just understanding the wisdom of witnessing the wisdom of the indigenous Irish people and knowing that my ancestors come from this place. It felt like home. And I'm so grateful you're not allowed to take pictures inside because everyone finally was still and quiet, listening and experiencing the profound sacredness of this place. Yeah, it was, it was sacred. There was, to me, obviously... There is practice of birth and death in this tomb. You understand the death, birth life cycles, and also being connected with the cycle of our planet, our earth, with the seasons and light. Well, and let me just explain because these things aren't commonly understood that anymore. Mm -hmm. They were back then. That life, death, life. When in New Agey people, whatever you want to say, 
talk about this or talk about the triple goddess, um, what they're really talking about is the fact that we go through many stages of life. Mm-hmm. So when you, you look at one full long life, say you live to 80 years old, that person has lived many lives within that life. And they have experienced many deaths within that one life. And for example, us as ex-Mormons and anyone else who's ex-Mormon, ex-Christian, that's a death. Mm -hmm. That is a huge death. Huge death. Um, Huge transformational experience to um, change your crux, core spiritual belief. Yeah. And you do. You feel like a little baby coming Mm -hmm. out. And most of us don't have parents. (laughs) Divorce. Divorce is another death. Divorce, yeah. Um... Having giving birth, giving birth is becoming another a parent. death. It's a death of, of being a, a child, a single mm-hmm. person, and now you are, you know, raising mm-hmm. a child. Yeah. Um, leaving for college and leaving the home mm-hmm. of your parents, of your upbringing, that's another death. Um, death is something that happens all the time. We just don't have very good systems for supporting it because of how our culture is so focused on posting the successes, posting the abundance, posting the new beginnings, the new births. Well, Um, I think that's why we see in our society a lot of depression now and anxiety and um, people are just... Show the woman screaming in childbirth. Yeah, well, nobody wants to see that. It's sacred. Mm -hmm. It's death. But we don't show it. No, we don't. And we don't even want to see a picture of us, what we look like doing it. (laughs) And then we go to sites like Newgrange, Mm -hmm. and we don't understand. Yeah. Thank you for explaining that. I forget that not everybody knows. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, and it wasn't, I guess, that long ago, maybe, that we didn't really understand either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Because our society doesn't doesn't talk about it. And Mm -hmm. life, death, life, sacred things... It's just, if we, if we could reclaim it, if we could reclaim it in our modern society, I feel like it would be, bring vibrancy and joy back to this process of being alive, rather than this competitive scramble, scraping by, grasping at anything we can get a hold of, which I feel like is where we're at now. Yeah. Um, yeah, it makes me think of just what we see, because it is, we do live in the time of social media, of the pretending. There's just so much pretending and no realness. And it, it's really quite um, ugly <laughs> when you're living in the raw, well, true life. You know, like, here we are, sitting on the floor, <laughs> in front of a closet, and speaking truth. But the way our society is set up, it's almost like we need to be out on a rock, overneath a canyon, with a waterfall, <laughs> and some... Maybe tinkling music, and then people will say, that's sacred. Oh, Mm -hmm. that's what sacred is. It's like, no, no. (laughs) Not to say that the beauty of nature can't be sacred and isn't sacred, and we don't experience that. But that that doesn't mean that that person is speaking sacred things, that Mm -hmm. they're speaking truth. It's, and we're just very backwards. (laughs) Um, I don't even know quite how to how to say it except except the examples and even that it feels like it falls mm-hmm. short sometimes. Usually for me, when I'm around someone who, if we've been to a sacred site or, or just yes, a sacred site, it's the ones that stay quiet, the ones that kind of ponder away into their own world and don't really share those are the ones that I'm like okay they get it they get it so maybe the next time you're out in nature 
or in a place that feels reverent to you. Or, you know, sitting on the floor in front of a closet. <laughs> or that too. Because <laughs> you carry it with you. Yeah, you do. Uh, just sit. Be still. Ponder in the quietness. And you'll begin to understand what's sacred, what's real, what's not real. Sacredness, holiness, divinity is something that we bring to a situation, not something that the situation brings to us. Mm -hmm. um, like, because when you think about these things that you know Christians trivialize, like a stick, like an indigenous person saying this stick is sacred. It is now my sacred tool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, they then start to use it in sacred ways. And it, it creates great meaning for them and for their people and for their culture. That is because this in here, they now brought outward and assigned it meaning. Mm -hmm. And it became meaningful and probably did provide healing and storytelling and mythology for their culture that then helped the whole tribe. Mm -hmm. And yet we, we can't even be in one of the most beautiful places on earth, one of the most ancient places on earth, and see the sacredness there because we're, we don't know how to bring it with yeah. us. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is really old. <laughs> I mean, that, <laughs> that person managed to make it stick Super powerful. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't even stand in front of the Great Pyramids of Egypt and make it powerful. <laughs> because you, it's you. It's you. It's all right here. <laughs> so I feel like you need to find the sacredness within. Understand that you are sacred as well. And then you will start to see the world in another view. You'll start to yeah. honor things. And they, yeah, so that's where the sacredness starts, is mm -hmm. with treating yourself sacred. sacred yep yeah. if you don't know how to treat yourself sacred how are you gonna how are you gonna treat the pyramid as sacred yeah or maybe it's not sacred to you maybe it's something else that maybe that you will choose so you will know because it's coming from here so sacredness is not something that someone's gonna tell you that you need to worship this or treat it sacred you'll know because you're gonna feel it and it's gonna be coming from right here if you start treating yourself sacred because we're all connected. Mm -hmm. And that's what sacredness is. <laughs> Treat yourself sacred and it will start to trickle out. You'll start to bring that with you as you become more mindful mm -hmm. in different situations. Yeah, and actually when you start treating yourself sacred, you start to having people around you that will treat you that way as well well and when you okay i'm wondering uh treat the self sacred what does that even look like because i feel like that could be a really abstract idea yeah um <clears throat> you know it's not just like rubbing oils all over yourself yeah. and saying i no. am magnificent <laughs> <laughs> um it's having boundaries it's not letting people use and abuse you it's yeah. um Recognizing that you are inherently worthy, mm -hmm. which can take a lot of work, a yeah. lot of journaling, a lot of introspection mm -hmm. on why you don't already naturally believe that. Yeah. Uh, doing the things that make me feel happy rather than doing things that make other people happy. Yep. Um, it's taking care of my body, eating good, feeding yeah. it things that will make it feel healthy and happy and joy. Um, and the process of... Um, this self-worth, this self-healing, this mm -hmm. treating the self sacred, usually the blocks we have there, that's that's the work that we really need to be focusing on. Like, mm -hmm. it'll bring up the stuff that is actually impacting the rest of your life yeah. negatively. Like, maybe you don't eat healthy, or maybe mm -hmm. you eat too much or too little because you have a deep, deep, feeling of I don't deserve yeah um and I feel for me one of the biggest things was saying no to people if they were doing something to me that made me feel less than I used to be the kind little girl 
that would just, oh, that's okay. Now it's been like, well, that actually really hurt me. Um, this, this, and this is why. And um, we have, I have a boundary now. My trust in our friendship has shifted. So I can still honor you, but I can't let you be in my inner circle anymore until I find that trust again. Um, that's been one of the biggest things for me with seeing who I am and what I desire um, in my life is treating myself sacred and letting those around me that maybe hurt me not be so close to me. Well, yeah, we when something's sacred, you don't let people treat it mm -hmm. like garbage. Yeah, it's like I am sacred. Or like an object. Yeah, I am sacred, I matter. You're not treating me that way, so, um, you know, you don't get to come in anymore. <laughs> so I really love this. I love where this has taken us, yeah. that this idea of sacred and treating things sacred starts with treating the self as sacred. And if you choose to pursue that practice of treating the self as sacred, it's going to lead you... <laughs> On a spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. It's going to lead you on a healing journey. Because the ways that you are devaluing yourself, those are your wounds. Yeah. So that's um, that's the sacred journey right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's spirituality. And that is why people always say go within to go without. And mm -hmm. I know people just throw this around. It's such a famous saying. The root of that is that what we are doing out here it all starts with the wounds in yeah. here and so, you sacred. know sacred and yep it's a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it it's really worth it well our society our society needs to reclaim this idea of the sacred it is time and it worries me what will become of us. It sounds so dramatic, but what will become <laughs> of us? And I'm not even just talking about global warming or climate change or how we treat the environment. I'm talking about how we treat each other and how we treat ourselves. So much pain and suffering has gone on yeah. in our society and is ongoing and it is unneeded we don't need to live these unhappy existence and like you know we said we're here for life is just such a blip yeah. why do we spend it just suffering why do we spend it in drudgery we we could choose something better we are capable of choosing something better for ourselves it is possible it all begins with one of us, the individual. Um, if we all can just start practicing this sacredness, it will ripple. And out. if nothing else, it'll improve your own life. Yeah. So, yeah. if nothing else, do it out of selfish motivation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. But <laughs> it's true. If 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 at the if at the if the only thing this work does is improve your life. Isn't that reason enough? Yeah. Well, I feel like for me and for us, um, it's doing, it's a head start for our children as well because we're doing this work and they're learning so much and seeing so much through us that we didn't get as children. And so it's teaching the next generations. Well, it does ripple outwards, although I don't know that I would say it, it will immediately make the people around you happy mm -hmm. or seem better in that way. But having boundaries and self-respect and treating the self as sacred, it sets an example to those around you that they can do the same thing. Yeah, have, they'll probably have tantrums. However, <laughs> however they choose to um, react to that mm -hmm. or, or use that lesson, it could immediately be positive or it could have some, they could have some negative responses, but... At the heart of it, you're choosing to live your life in sacredness. And when you have 
so little time on the, in this world, why not choose joy? So I think the Christians did get one thing right, and that is, well, maybe they got a couple things right, but the scripture, men are, that they might have joy. Um, we are, that we might have joy. So, mm. you are sacred. You are sacred. Thank you for joining us today at The Middle Path. You can find out more about Kat and Jana at thewildbliss.com and facebook.com slash thewildbliss. 